the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Ah. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the very presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is to that great God that I give reverence to today. My shepherd, my way maker, the one who woke me up this morning, started me on my way. The one who has prepared a place for me, took the time to prepare, who has anointed me, who's watched over me. It's to that great God that I give reverence to today. He's been good to me. I think there's somebody else in this audience that he's been good to also. Oh, you're fooling me right now. Hasn't he been good to you? Hasn't he watched over you? Hasn't he protected you? Hasn't he cared for you? Hasn't he, hasn't he provided for you? And when, the, when the enemies came against you, wasn't he there beside you? Every step of the way. Isn't he a good God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, that, it's to that great God that I give reverence to today. To the officers of this great church, I am eternally grateful for this opportunity that has been presented to me on this day. Do me a favor. I, I have, um, I, and trust me, when I say I am grateful uh, for this opportunity, I do not take it lightly. Amen. I think uh, the church has been exist in existence for 150 years. I do not take it lightly. I am eternally grateful. I, I have, I, I want to um, immediately after service, I, 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 my family and I bought a pen for every member. Amen. Amen. It says, thank you. Amen. Amen. I am grateful for this opportunity. You've met my family. Uh, my auntie just walked in, as well as my cousins. Amen. They walked in. Um, Sister McCulley, who's uh, the uh, wife of Reverend McCulley. Uh, you met my dad, or you saw my dad. He is retired preacher. Amen. Amen. He's been preaching now for about 50 some odd years. Amen. I'm thankful for him. I, he's present with me and as well my wife and, and, and family, my immediate family um, that's present there. Uh, five, uh, three sons, uh, Zachary who is not with us, um, Isaiah uh, and Jeremiah who's sleeping right now with his mouth wide open. Amen. <laughs> Amen. As well as my two daughters, Kendall and Gabrielle. Of course, I can't forget uh, the woman who has blessed me. Amen. With such wonderful gifts. Amen. The Bible says you ought to have a quiver. Amen. It says that in the book of Psalms. I got a quiver, okay? I got a quiver. Now, who, who don't have five? Amen. Who, who got five children? Anybody? Amen. Who don't have five? Amen. Amen. You need to catch up. Amen. Amen. Y'all need to catch up. Amen. Amen. You need to catch up. Amen. You got to have, I, don't want, I want everybody to have a quiver like I got a quiver. Amen. 
Amen. I'm, I'm eternally grateful. I'm eternally grateful for this opportunity. To the ministers that's as well on the rostrum, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for this opportunity. To the uh, diaconate ministry, to the deaconess, um, I'm grateful for. Uh, to the search committee, I'm thankful for this opportunity. To you, my brothers and sisters, I am grateful. I'm grateful as well. Uh, Pastor Bonner, I'm, I'm thankful in his absence. Uh, he's a friend of my dad, uh, as well as he's a friend of my pastor, uh, Pastor Jimmy L. Brown, pastor of St. Luke Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. I am grateful for this opportunity. Well, my brother, turn to your neighbor and tell him it's preaching time. Yeah, it's preaching time. It is preaching time. The choir, I mean, stirred us up. Yeah, that the the the, the uh, I was ready to go when the minister said he he got to introduce me. I said, wait a minute, Amen. They said he is wonderful. Hallelujah, salvation and glory. Amen. And then the sister, where's the sister that was singing? Thank you. Amen. Where's she at? Raise your hand. There she, there she is in the house. Amen. I saw her in Sunday school. Thank you. The Lord, Lord has been done some great things for me. Amen. And as well for you. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor, beloved. Uh, make sure after you get done uh, with worship service, uh, the pen, um, it does three things like God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It, it lights up, it writes, and it's also one of those things that you can use for your uh, tablet or cell phone. Amen. It got a little rubber bottom on it. Amen. My children got them. Amen. I assigned my baby girls to take care of that responsibility. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Uh, do me a favor. Turn, turn with me. Turn with me. Um, to the Old Testament writings of the book of Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Look with me, Old Testament writings of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. The Old Testament writings of Chronicles, the second chapter. Now, it's a custom that we honor the Word of God, and you won't be standing long. Amen. Amen. That very first verse, check this out. It says, and it came to pass after this. You may be seated. <laughs> and it came to pass after this. You see that there? And it came to pass after this. After this. It came to pass after this. I, I've already been instructed and um, he, he, he introduced me. He said, I have the hour. He said that. Y'all heard him? I didn't bring enough material to last an hour. Amen. So you just thank God. I mean, preachers already said thank God. Amen. I do have an amen corner already. Amen. 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 It, it, it came to pass after this. The, uh, this beloved particular narrative um, it's one of the more famous narratives in all of the historical writings of the Old Testament, if you will. Many, many sermons in this whole context of uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, as well as uh, chapter 19, have been pinned um, down through the years. There's been a number of different uh, things that have been brought forth. Uh, songs and preachers have preached about this. This particular narrative where we find Jehoshaphat uh, going down to battle with about four or five. And the psalmist says it's about six different uh, tribes that was against the children of Israel. They were going down to battle them. 
as they were preparing to battle them and some of the things that we've kind of, we're, we're familiar with. If you, if you look at verse number 15 and you got your Bibles handy, you can underline it. It, it, it gives us that, that famous promise there. It says, for the battle is not yours. You see that there? But it's the Lord's. That those are things we need to remember this year, especially on January the 20th. Amen. The battle's not yours. It got to be the Lord's. It, it says in verse number, number 17, uh, from the Mosaic um, uh, words of Moses, it, it says, stand still. You see that there? And see the salvation of God. These are some of the uh, more familiar preaching points, if you will, from this passage of Scripture. But when I looked at this passage of Scripture, I got hung up on those words that I, that I read to you in that very first verse. And it came to pass after this. Now, my daddy has taught me and trained me very well, as well as my pastor, if there's an after this, Deacon, there must be a before this. Is, is there anybody in here that, you, that has a before this? And now, praise the Lord, you have an after, after this? Uh, I think you all are going to help me preach this thing today. Look at, look at chapter 19 because before you can dive into after this, you need to know what they prepared before this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I want you to read it in, at your, in your own leisure at home. I'm just going to peruse through this uh, very, very quickly because in chapter number 19, it, 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 it Jehoshaphat, he was getting the house of the Lord, all of the children of Israel together. He was setting things in order. It was almost like having a New Year's resolution, if you will. At the, the, the year 2016 that ended, and now 2017 is upon us. And he was setting the house in order. He, in verse number three of chapter 19, he began to prepare his heart to seek after the Lord. He began in, in verse number four, he went again unto all the people and began to teach them what thus says the Lord. He began to, in verse number five, set judges, good judges in the land. He was setting things in order. He, he, he was uh, in verse number seven. In verse number seven, he began to set, set it so that everyone was fearing God. They had complete reverence for the goodness of God. He had been good to them. And they said, we're going to worship God because of his goodness. And I'm looking around this audience right now. And I can tell God has been good to somebody in the midst of us right now. And you have began the process of setting things in order. Began the process of setting things in order. And he, he started, he started uh, making judges and priests that was, some was going to be over the things that are, are outside of the temple and some of them were going to be over things inside of the temple. Everything was in order. He began to really set up things. Everything was beginning to be in its proper place. He was beginning to make sure all of his T's were crossed and all of his eyes were dotted. I mean, he was setting things up so that, so, that, so that the Lord would be praised. He was setting it up so that God would get the glory and everybody around would know that they ought to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But then came chapter 20. 
after this. And, and I don't know about you, but you, has it ever happened to you where you began to set stuff up and then the devil shows up? Now, I'm not, I, I think I'm talking to the wrong show. Has it ever happened to you where you set things in order? You, you, you prayed about it. You set things up. You, you praise God about it. And then all of a sudden, the devil shows up. After this. After this. Set things in order. Now all of a sudden, chapter 20, and it came to pass after this. It, 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 he, he, he made things right. And, and now, look, 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 look. I, I, he, he set it up. And as he set it up, things started the enemy <clears throat> decided that what you got, I want. Now, 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 and understanding this, when you, when you look at some of the enemies, God, when they, had, when they had traveled around and so forth, when they was traveling around in the circles before they entered into the promised land, what ended up happening, God told them not to mess with some of these, some of these folks. Not to destroy. Now you do know the children of Israel destroyed a number of different uh, uh, tribes as they were in preparing to enter into the, into the promised land. And it was by the help of God. But God told them not to destroy some of these folks. And, and now all of a sudden the, some of these folks had gotten stronger. And they realized that we can take them. And we ought to destroy them. And, but God had initially shared, don't destroy them, but, but now all of a sudden they've gotten stronger. Have you ever known some ungrateful folks? You do stuff for them, you take care of them, but then all of a sudden they are ungrateful. The, these were ungrateful folks. God had blessed them and to keep them, but now all of a sudden they are desiring to destroy the children of Israel. All five tribes were against the children of Israel, preparing themselves to destroy the children of Israel. Listen, 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 I, I, I want you to know in 2017, the first thing you need to make sure that you do, first thing you need to make sure you do is that and when the enemy is against you, Five tribes are against you. You need to trust God's character over your contest. You need to trust that God knows exactly what he's doing. You need to trust because God is yet in charge. He still sits high and he still looks low. I don't care what the enemy may be trying to do. When you got God on your side, who can be against you? Trust God's character. The character of God was what was leading them and guiding them. God's character says that I will not forsake you. Trust his character. He trusted his character and look at <laughs> look at it because because the funny thing is look at verse number number 15 the funny thing is is that Jehaziel you see that there Jehaziel he begins to to, to pray he said he, he begins to tell him he counsel folks he said he said keep cool he says chill out look look at it right there in verse number 15 now he said keep cool chill out he, he says, he says, he said, be, be cool. Now, 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 now me, I, I, I would say, Jehaziel, what are you looking at? Because I see five armies bigger than me. And you telling me to keep cool. What are you looking at, Jehaziel? He, he, and, and I see folks all around me. 
and all I see is some slaves that don't know how to fight. And you telling me to keep cool? Yeah, yeah, I, and Jehaziel said, yeah, keep cool. Because see, this battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. And see, see, we don't wrestle with, with, the, with those carnal weapons, but we handle our situations on our knees. I think I got a few folks in here that know how to pray your problems away. You know how to pray things into submission. Every now and then, you need to call on God. God will deliver you. Haziel said, Haziel said, Reverend, he said, he said, he said, he said, you, you he said, he said, he said, y'all looking at, at all the, the, the facts. Yeah, yeah, there's five armies all around. But he said, but I'm looking at the truth. The truth is in his word. He said, he said, you looking at all the armies and all the folks, but the truth says that the Lord will He'll protect you from when he, what he promised to it being manifested. You see, because the, the thing I love about God is that God is not going to trust anybody else to make it come to pass. God is not going to even trust us to make it come to pass. But God is going to trust himself and he's going to put divine obligation on himself to bring it to pass. So every now and then, when it looks bad, trust God. When it feels bad, trust God. When it seems bad, trust God. When it, when it, when it think, when you think it's bad, trust in God. He won't leave you. Armies was all around them. The first, first thing that you got to do is trust God's character. His character is always true. His character over your context. I think there was a songwriter that said, don't tell God, don't tell God about your problems. Tell your problems about your God. Mm-hmm. You got to let your problems know who you serve and whom you serve. Don't trust, don't trust, trust God's character over your contest. Look, 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 second thing, I'm almost done. Second thing is this, check this out. Check this, second, second thing. Second, second thing is this, second, check, check this out. Because I, I, if I can, if, can I back into this? Let me, let me back into this. Look at verse number 14. They got, look at verse number 14. It's, it, it, it says, and then Jehaziel, son of Zechariah. Now skip down, skip down, skip down. Verse number 15, it says, and he said, hearken unto Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. He says, and thou king of Jehoshaphat. He said, thus says the Lord unto you, be not afraid. You see that? Nor be dismayed. By reason of this great multitude. He says, he says, he says, for the battle, look at that. It's not yours, but, but the Lord's. But the Lord. But. Now, now look at this, look at this, look at this. Verse number 16. It says, now, tomorrow go down against them. Wait, wait, you see that? It says, tomorrow. Go down against them. And, and then he gives, then he has, God has the audacity to give the coordinates where the enemy's gonna be. Look at, look at, I, I promise you it's right there. It says, Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zig. You see that? And ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness in Jeril. You see that? And then, then look at the women, 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 because you, because you, you all not getting. Look, look at verse number seventeen. Is it up there yet? Look at verse number seventeen. It says, it says, ye shall not need to fight in this battle, but set yourself and stand. Still. Now, now, our 
already told God in verses 3, 4, 5 that I was scared. I already told him I was scared. I did. I already shared that with him. I shared that vision with him. I was scared. And, and, and see, God knows everything. He's omnipotent. He knows everything. He knows that we're a band of slaves. So we don't have no weapons of warfare. So he knows what we got. So I'm grateful that verse number 15, the last portion, it says, for the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. I'm grateful for that. But then, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because he says tomorrow, he says go down. Now wait a minute, God, I told you I was scared. And, and then he says, look, he says in verse number 17, he says, you don't need to fight but set yourself. Now, I'm, 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 I'm a kinlot baby. Don't get that wrong, all right? I, I know how to fight, all right? And I know what that means when it says set yourself. Don't get that wrong. But God, you said in verse number 15, this battle's not mine. It's the Lord's. You know I'm scared. And you're telling me to go down tomorrow. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. What are, you, what are you saying to, and, and I'm glad you asked me, what are you saying? You see, God is at least warning us, this is your second point, to show up. To at least show up. You see, you see most of us are claiming it we're not showing up. You see, most of us are saying, I'm going to get that job, but we're still lying in the bed and we're not showing up. You see, God is at least saying, you won't have to fight, but I do desire you to show up and at least take part of the victory that I'm going to deliver unto you. You see, beloved, it is, a, it is a team effort with us and God to make manifest the miracles that God wants to show in our, in our midst. You're just not getting the breakthrough by just praying for it. You at least got to show up. You see, you're just not getting the things that you need in your life. You gotta show up. And think the thing I found out when you show up, God will show out in your midst. Every now and then, you got to show up. Say, God, I can't handle this, but I know you can. And when you show up for God, God will show out in your midst. Every now and then, you got to turn it over to the Lord. He will show out in front of your enemies. He'll show out in front of those folks that are hating on you. When you show up for the Lord. You got to show up. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in our country today. And I get tired of us black folks not showing up and wanting things to change. You want stuff to change, show up! Listen, listen as I come to a close here. You gonna help me close it? The last thing that, uh, first, the first thing you got to trust God, um, character over your contest. Second thing, you got to show up. The, the, the third thing, the third thing is this. God will not wait 
but God will work while you worship. God, God, it, 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 it's, it's right there. Flip over to verse number, number 20, number, number 18. It says, that, it says that, and Jehoshaphat began to bow his head to the face of the Lord. And, and the last portion it says, and, and worshiping the Lord. And he brought around him uh, Levi's, and in verse number 19, and folks that knew how to call upon the name of the Lord. Listen, in 2017, you don't want anybody in your circle that don't know how to call upon the name of the Lord. He, 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 set, he set folks around him that knew about the goodness of the Lord. And in verse number 20, it says, and they rose up early. You see that there? In verse, in, in, in the morning, into the wilderness. And as they got out there into the wilderness, the thing I love about this is that while they were worshiping, God was working it out. You see, when you worship and you call upon God, I don't care what your problem may be. I don't care what issue you may have. When you call upon him, you do know he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. And when you call upon God, he'll be where you need him to be, when you need him to be there. And you gotta call upon him in worship. You gotta call upon him praising the name of the Lord. After all, when you think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for us, you got to worship God. And when you worship God, things might not be how you want them to be. But when you call upon a God that's able to do anything but fail, you got to worship God in spirit and in truth. When you worship God, the devil don't like it. You know he don't like it because he used to be the main worship leader there in heaven. But God exited him from the heavens and all of a sudden now he's trying his best to mess up the worship of God's believers. But every now and then you got to worship God just because he's good. And when you worship God because he's good, you send a message to the devil. You had your job, but now I got your job. I'm a worshiper for God. When you worship God, he'll change things. He'll fix things for you. He'll rearrange things for you. He'll make sickness get out of your body. When you call on him, I know I'm right about it. When you call on God, he's able He's able to do anything but fail. Able to work it out for you. He's able to change things for you. I know he is. He's able to work it and make it work out for you. Listen, can I call a few witnesses to the witness stand. Y'all remember that blind man? Been blind. Come to the witness stand and share with the church about the goodness of the Lord. He will tell you God has been good to me and you ought to worship him. Let me see if I can bring the woman with the issue of blood for 18 years. When you call, when you call on, when you call on the name of the Lord, and you touch the hem of His garment, He'll make a way out of no way for you. Let me see if I can call on Lazarus. Lazarus will tell you that I once was dead, but Jesus called me from the dead. When you call on Him, He'll make a way out of no way. You remember that little boy who had a lunch? He will tell you when you call on the name of the Lord, 
he'll break bread and change things for you. What I'm simply trying to tell you is when you call on him in worship, he'll fix it for you. He'll bless you and take care of you. Every now and then call on the name of the Lord because that's what Jesus did out there on Calvary. He called on the name of God and God heard his cry. And when he called on them, yes, they wounded him. Yes, they beat him. Yes, they nailed him to a cross. He died out there on Calvary's hill. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Call on him. Call on God and worship. A lot of enemies may be around you. Trust God's character. He's never failed. The enemies may be around you, may be in fear, but show up. Show up. When you show up, you show the devil. You may have the power in the natural, but I serve a God who has the power in the spiritual. Show up. And when you worship God, if you wait on God, he'll work while you worship. Listen, stand to your feet all over the sanctuary. I want to extend an invitation to accepting Christ as your savior. Can I ask a very simple question as we prepare our hearts to accept him? Do you have enemies? Do you have folks that don't like you? This, if you don't have a friend in Jesus, you're doing it all by yourself. But when you got a friend in Jesus, he'll go with you and protect you no matter what the enemies may look like. So I'm extending an invitation to accepting the God that will be with you all the way. You ought to come today. If you don't know Jesus for yourself, you know you got enemies. You know you got problems. Go with it with Jesus. Is there one that don't know Jesus? Is there one that don't know the Lord today? You ought to come. Give this preacher your hand. Give God your heart. When you give God your heart, you are working right now in your worship and he's working it out for you. Is there one? Is there one that don't know Jesus? Is there one that don't know Jesus? This is your moment to come. Is there one? Is there one? You say, well, Reverend, I know the Lord, but I need a church home. Is there one that need a church home? You ought to come right now. You ought to come right now. You having a hard time showing up? Listen, the deacons will pray for you. This is your time to come. Is there one this morning? Is there one this morning? You ought to come. You don't know Jesus. You need a church home. You need someone to pray with you and for you. This is your time to come. Come and accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. I promise you, he'll take care of you. Is there one? 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 
Amen. Seeing none, but yet there is still room at the cross. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.